Hey everyone, welcome back. And look what arrived in the mail. This lovely old army crate. Entirely metal. It's got some great inventory numbers on it. It originally was apparently ammunition for cannon. So that's pretty fun. I don't really know how old it is. Maybe from the 70s or 80s, I'm guessing. I have no clue. I don't even really care that much. I just know it looks really cool. And it's going to make a pretty fantastic Eura case. So an operation will be tipped up on one end. So it'll be vertical. Um, and that means that this lid, this lid is permanently attached on hinges in the back. So that's going to have to be removed. But I want to do it in a way that I still can attach it for travel if I want to. Because it does have these, these wonderful handles on the side. So I should at least prepare for moving it around at times. So I need to cut those off and then work out some kind of hook system so they can come back on as needed. And then in the back corner, I need to mount a power jack for the power supply, which will go inside. So I need to cut a hole for this. So this is the hinge for the lid. And my current thought is this will be down in the final orientation. And then the latch hardware won't get in the way. It'll be up top and can just dangle and that'll be fine. Um, and I can leave this really clean so it sits nicely on a desk. So my current thinking is if I can cut along here with an angle grinder, we can pop this D-ring out but still leave enough metal here so there's this hook, arr, this hook to grab the D-ring. So when I want to put the lid on, I can push the D-ring up in there, latch it, and that should hold it in place well enough for whatever minor transportation needs I have. And the good thing about this approach is, should I completely mess this up, I can just drill out these rivets and completely replace this, this hinge holder here. So I have options if I screw up, which is always nice. So I've scribed some lines to guide me. Um, I just used a compass with a scriber set in it. So I got this nice offset. So just holding the same angle, dragging it along, was able to get a pretty nice little line there. So let's store some sparks. Yeah, not bad. Bit of cleaning up of the file. I think that'll do nicely. So this will be the case in its operating orientation. It's pretty stable, and I think once some weight gets in there, it'll be even more so. And if I'm really desperate, I can add some weight to the bottom or shims or something, but I really think it'll be fine. Uh, so the latches will just kind of dangle up here. They can be, they can be flipped around to get them out of the way. But Whatever way, it's fine. I have room for two full rows, so six U total. And there is enough room to put a one U row in, which I'll probably do, but I don't know how much I'll actually use that. And at uh, one side, I'll probably mount a uh, spring reverb tank on one side to get access to that anyway. So I think this will look nice and it'll work. So next up is putting in this power jack back in that corner. Here it is set up on the mill. Bit big for it, but it's gonna work out. So I ended up deciding to put the hole here in this concavity. That way the switch, it won't be leaning on the, resting on the switch if it's on the back side. It's gonna be a bit of a reach when it's set up to get back to the power switch, but um, I really think that makes more sense to put it there. So I'm gonna do it that way. The only other option is on the side and then there would have been no way to set it up in the middle. So I'd rather do this. So the cut itself is pretty simple. Plunge in, cut out a rectangle. I've already worked out the dimensions, um, taking into account the diameter of the cutter, and that was chosen so that, to make sure that the corners here will fit in there. So let's get to it. That was, of course, an extremely loud cut. 
because it's just a metal drum at this point. So use your hearing protection. So it's in and it fits beautifully, except the holes don't line up. It, the body of the thing isn't actually centered on the center line like the holes are. And that was just a silly assumption on my part. So now I'm just going to have to widen them out and that's going to suck. Okay, back on the mill, and instead of worrying about coordinate systems and calculations to figure out where those holes should go, I'm going to do what I should have done at the beginning. Put the plug in there and just find each hole individually with a hole finder, and then uh, work from there. Here's what it looks like from the inside, um, with the washers and nuts in place. You can't even tell. I'll always know, and it'll always bug me a little bit but this definitely is pretty nice. So now it's time to start thinking about the power system. I want the distribution boards mounted roughly here. I have some standoffs coming that I'll use. And again, all of the screws need to be coming through these, well, they're convexities on this side, but the recesses from the other side so that the heads don't scratch anything or cause it to wobble or whatever. So there's a question of where to put the power supply itself. Naturally, I'd like it over here out of the way, but I can't bolt it over here. So what I'm going to do is take this sheet of aluminum and cut off a chunk. And that can bolt in here on the convexity. And then the power supply, which has these two M3 threaded holes there, 33 millimeters apart, according to the data sheet, that will then screw onto this plate. And so we'll kind of bridge it over to where it works. I'm going to leave it a little bit wibbly wobbly, but I don't think it'll be a problem. Um, even if this ever is, you know, in a car being moved somewhere, I won't be using it then. It won't be on. So that can vibrate a bit. I don't think it'll be a problem. So I was unsure how I was going to drill the holes for the mounting plate um, precisely because I hate just doing transfer punches and it's never as good as you like. But then I realized, oh, I can actually put the box over the mill vise. The mill vise is still in there. So I didn't have to take it off again, which is good because I already trammed it once today and didn't want to do that again. So I can use the full power of the DRO on the mill to get these holes drilled in a nice square pattern. So there it is. It's pretty solid. I only have it screwed in by two at the moment because I'm out of acorn nuts. Um, I'll do the other two when I get some more in. Uh, don't like having bare thread exposed like that. It's going to chew up a knuckle someday. You just know it. And I'll do the same for this at the same time. So next up will be the, uh, the bus boards. And it'll be kind of similar. I'm just going to wait for um, some standoffs I just ordered to come in. And then I'll get that done. Okay, I couldn't resist cutting that off, cleaning it up on the mail. I think it looks a lot better now. Welcome back. It's a couple days later. Uh, the standoffs have arrived, so I can get on mounting the uh, power distribution boards. And then also the mounting rails have arrived. I said to go with uh, nut strips instead of free-floating captive nuts. Um, I really didn't enjoy that experience. I found it very fiddly and annoying to get modules to screw in properly because the the nuts just kept wanting to slide around to either side. So we'll see if this is any better. And if I hate it, I can always pull the strips out and just um, stuff them with free floating nuts. So let's get these uh, boards mounted. After messing around for a while, I think this is how I'm going to mount them. I can't center them because then neither of the two innermost sets of uh, mounting points would be over a convexity. Um, and, I don't, and again, I don't want to screw through to the, to the low side because it'll scratch when it's laid down on stuff. Uh, so they could have both been on one side or the other, but I think I'd like them kind of staggered like this, a little bit more visually interesting, not that anyone will see it. So I think despite my general abhorrence of the whole concept, I'm just going to use them as a template and just drill through them in place. I can get a really nice horizontal reference um, against the edge of the convexities here. 
so I can just drill two holes, bolt those down, then drill the rest and it should line up adequately for this purpose. Here they are, mounted up. It's pretty good. Um, the place where it has to skip over a step, one of the, the mounting holes, it is a little bit wobbly there. I'm not super happy with that. I just don't see a particularly good solution. So I'll just have to be careful when I'm plugging stuff in, or particularly when unplugging stuff from these to get both hands in there and, and make sure it's st stable. I did uh, <laughs> chip some of the shroudings um, drilling the way I did. It was a little bit more violent than I would have liked, but it all seemed to go okay. And if you look at the back, it's presentable. You know, it's not CNC or even DRO, but uh, it's okay. What if I just make it more complicated? <laughs>